Saoirse Ronan. Oscar-nominated Irish actress. Born. April 12, 1994, The Bronx, New York City, New York, USA. Birth name. Saoirse Una Ronan. Nickname. Saoirse. Height. 5 foot 6, 1.68 m. Sersha Una Ronan was born in the Bronx, New York City, New York, United States, to Irish parents, Monica Ronan, née Brennan, and Paul Ronan, an actor. When Sersha was three, the family moved back to Dublin, Ireland. Sersha grew up in Dublin and briefly in company. Carlo, before moving back to Dublin with her parents. Sersha made her first TV appearance with a small role in a few episodes of the TV series, The Clinic, 2003. Her first film appearance was in the 2007 movie, I Could Never Be Your Woman, 2007. Sersha received international fame after appearing in the movie, Atonement, 2007, which was directed by Joe Wright. The movie co-starred Kira Knightley and James McAvoy. The film was successful, both critically and commercially, and in 2008, Sersha earned an Oscar nomination for her role. She became one of the youngest actresses to be nominated for an Oscar. She continued to earn success and fame. Between 2008 to 2011, she starred in a number of successful movies, including City of Ember, 2008, which earned her a nomination for Irish Film and Television Award, The Lovely Bones, 2009, for which she was nominated for a BAFTA Award, and The Way Back, 2010, for which she won Irish Film and Television Award for Actress in a Supporting Role. In 2016, Ronan was nominated for her second Oscar for Brooklyn, 2015. She became the second youngest actress to receive two Oscar nominations at the age of 21. The youngest actress is Angela Lansbury. In 2018, Ronan was nominated for her third Oscar for Lady Bird, 2017. She's the second youngest actress, first being Jennifer Lawrence, to receive three Oscar nominations before the age of 24. Saoirse Ronan resides in London, United Kingdom. Family Spouse Jack Lowden, July 2024, present. Children No children Parents Monica Ronan Paul Ronan Trademarks Has an uncanny ear for accents Clear blue eyes Trivia in traditional Irish, the name Sersha is pronounced Sersha, and that is the way she pronounces it when she's in Ireland. When she's talking to people from North America, she pronounces it Sershu. In England on the Graham Norton Show, series slash season 24, episode 14, she pronounced it Sersha. Her first name Sersha is Irish and means freedom. Her middle name Una is Irish and means unity. Her surname Ronan is also Irish and means little seal. Skilled at martial arts and often utilizes them in action scenes. Holds dual citizenship for Ireland and the United States of America. Peter Jackson cast her with the intent of having an unknown play the lead role of Susie Salmon, but things changed when in the middle of filming The Lovely Bones, 2009, Ronan was nominated for an Oscar, BAFTA, and Golden Globe for her performance in Atonement, 2007. Moved from New York to Ireland when she was three and has lived there ever since. Learned the French language for her role as Mary Stewart in Mary Queen of Scots, 2018. Left her Byzantium, 2013, director Neil Jordan, speechless after she performed the difficult piano sonata Opus 2, no, 3, foot which she mastered in just 12 weeks. In 2008, at the age of 13, she became the seventh youngest actress to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Atonement, 2007. The only actresses younger than her to be nominated are Tatum O'Neill, Mary Batham, Quinn Cummings, Abigail Breslin, Patty McCormick, and Anna Paquin. Peter Jackson cast her as the lead character in his film, The Lovely Bones, 2009, based on an audition tape she sent in from Ireland. They were so impressed by the tape that they did not even meet her prior to offering her the role. Brian Dennehy, her co-star in The Seagull, 2018, described her as the most talented actor he had ever worked with. 
For many years, Ronan has been an ambassador for the Irish Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, ISPCC. Time magazine ranked her performance in The Lovely Bones, 2009, as the third greatest female performance of 2009, just behind Monique and Carrie Mulligan, and ahead of Meryl Streep. Sing Tell Me, For the Lost River, 2014, soundtrack, which was scored by Johnny Jewell. Jewel said Ronan had never sang publicly before, so, to melt the ice, I set up an eight-track on the floor of the kitchen next door. I unplugged all the phones from the wall and put them inside the refrigerator. She came into the room, and the three of us piled up all of the furniture and suitcases in the corner to block the door. I wanted to make her feel as safe as possible, and I wanted her to sing as intimately as she could. Like she was the only person in the world. I promised her there was no way anyone was getting into that room until we were done. Ryan turned off the all lights, and all three of us sat on the floor in a circle in the dark. We recorded it in two takes with a single microphone and no headphones. There are no words to describe that moment. As of 2018, Sersha is the second youngest actress to receive three Oscar nominations before the age of 24. Ronan was born in New York City and raised in Ireland. Second youngest actress get a second Oscar nomination at the age of 21, behind only of Angela Lansbury, who got her second nomination at the age of 20. Has starred in five films nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, Atonement, 2007, The Grand Budapest Hotel, 2014, Brooklyn, 2015, Lady Bird, 2017, and Little Women, 2019. She was offered the role of Kitty in Anna Karenina, 2012, but turned it down to star in Byzantium, 2012, and The Host, 2013. Her reasoning for turning down the film was its long production schedule, which would have required her to turn down movie roles from fall 2011 to late spring 2012 to film what would have ended up as a supporting role. By the turning down the role, she was able to take the lead role in two films. She was replaced by Alicia Vikander. Quotes. He has a great way of getting the message across, like if I'm confused about doing a scene or a certain line or something, he explains it so well and so clearly. He's just fantastic, on Joe Wright, director of Atonement, 2007. Bryony Tallis is such an amazing character and I'm so lucky to play her. It's unbelievable. Mom and I were in bed and Dad was waiting up for the announcements again, because that's the way my daddy is. It's kind of a bit weird actually, in a good way, in a fantastic way. I never expected this in a million years to happen. I can't believe it. I'm really proud as well that two Irish Paddies have been nominated for an Oscar for the same film. It's really great for Ireland, great. On being nominated for an Oscar. It's not work, it is more of a passion. It is so much fun and it is really makes you feel great at the end of the day. You feel like you are really after doing something good and you are after accomplishing something. Acting is one of these things that I can't really describe. It's just like, why do you love your mom and dad? You know, you just do. I like books that are exciting and that make you think about things as well. I like things that have a twist like Atonement, 2007, which I haven't read obviously, as I'm a bit young. Be the person I'm playing. That's what acting is. You're pretending to be someone else. It wasn't one of those things where you hear about it and you jump up and down and scream. We just sat there, on the couch in their living room, and were trying to figure out what they just said. Wait a minute, I've been cast in a Peter Jackson film. For a few days, it was weird. I was just trying to get my head around it on how she reacted when she found out she'd been cast as Susie Salmon in The Lovely Bones, 2009. I know a lot of people must think that The Lovely Bones, 2009, is a pretty dramatic film and it's going to be really deep and dark and everything, but I promise you it's not. It's really humorous and funny and bright and happy. Then this awful thing happens, and it kind of makes everyone really sad, obviously, but they have to get on with things. It's like the journey that Susie takes to learn to let go and realize that she can't be with her family anymore, and the same for her family. They have to let go, and they know that they can't be with Susie. But it's a really funny, light-hearted thing. There's some really dramatic scenes in it as well, 
which is great with the lovely bones, 2009, because you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get to do funny scenes and dramatic scenes. You get to cry, you get to laugh, so it's great talking about the lovely bones, 2009. On developing a voice pattern for the character Wanda and the host, we looked at people like Jane Fonda in the 70s, just intonations in their speech and how well-spoken they all were. Jane Fonda doesn't sound like an alien, but she was very, very well-spoken, she still is. She has a quite beautiful way of speaking. We don't really have that today with young women. On her rumored participation in The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, 2012, there was talks about me playing the Wood Elf Iteril, but I had to turn it down. I was really disappointed, but there were other projects I had to consider, and to spend a year doing The Hobbit wouldn't have left me time for anything else. The older I get, the more in touch I am with what activists are doing, and the more I want to help them. When you're young, there's a trace of inspiration that comes out of what you respond to naturally or what you're drawn to. I've always found, with most of the roles that I've taken on, that physicality has just naturally played a massive part in who that person was. Even if they aren't very energetic, there's a certain movement in their voice that I need to find in order to unlock them. One of the things I like about acting is the relationships you can form when you're working, especially between actors. You could meet someone on the Monday, and by Wednesday, you'll have kissed them, you'll have hugged them, you'll have danced with them, they'll have seen you in a corset or an underdress or a pair of boxer shorts. Any insecurities you had just go out the window because they have to. I still like it when people end up together, I think that's great. That's why Richard Curtis will always be adored. We need a bit of both. But I think that people are terrified to put that in films now. Oh.